Hi everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this updated video. I really hope you're doing fantastic today. It's been very windy across the Caribbean, so we're going to be taking a look at what is currently happening, the rainfall forecast through tomorrow morning as well, and the winds as uh, of course, but also there is pretty good confidence in that cool down for next week so some cooler air from north america is going to be making its way down and that will likely be felt across the caribbean region so we'll be talking about that as well and we'll be taking a look elsewhere in the world so there is a new tropical cyclone named Kiralee, which is making its way towards the australian coast we'll briefly talk about that and there's also that invest area uh which is near mauritius and la reunion and uh, that is likely to bring with it some additional heavy rain across the islands so we'll be talking about that in today's update video let's get straight into it here we're seeing that uh, there is that frontal system with the, uh, the tail of it extended into parts of the Caribbean. So there are some passing showers at times across the Leeward Islands, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and even for some spots in Hispaniola, potentially for Cuba as well. And around two days ago, there was quite a bit of rain across parts of Jamaica, especially northern parishes. But since then, things have pretty much cleared up and it's just been very windy, maybe with some passing showers or so. And that's likely to remain the story for a while. Then as we head over into parts of Central America, we can see some of these denser cloud patches moving through, potentially with some rainfall associated with them. And uh, through the rest of the, uh, the Lesser Antilles, we can see that it is a similar story. We've got these patches of clouds coming in with some associated moisture bring in rainfall so that has been the trend it's also been very windy as i said this is a look at the forecast for early tomorrow morning so here we can see the shades of blue so a lot of these winds over 25 knots going up to around 30 even stronger than that and gusts could be even higher as we head throughout the day so much of the caribbean right now is very very windy especially offshore colombia where we see that darker shading off blue that is indicating stronger winds even seeing some greens popping up so those are winds up to around 34 knots uh, which is heading up to around 39 miles per hour or so let's look at the rainfall forecast so this is as we're going to be heading into tomorrow and uh, here we can see around tomorrow afternoon here so this is from the euro model and here we're seeing that there are some colorful patches across some areas so as i mentioned there's the tail end of a front which extends across parts of the greater antilles so expect some uh, more periods of intermittent showers which may be heavy at times for parts of the Dominican Republic and Haiti, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, even for the uh, Lesser Antilles on a whole as well with those cloud patches moving in. So all the way through the Lesser Antilles down to Trinidad, Tobago, and even near the ABC Islands right there. Much rainfall not really expected for Jamaica, although there could be some passing showers at times. Things uh, should be a bit drier for the Cayman Islands and through much of the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands. And also, as we head over into Central America, it gets a bit colorful there. So I, again, I showed you guys those cloud patches earlier. Those are moving in with some rainfall. So across parts of eastern Honduras, Nicaragua, uh, maybe even some spots in Belize may experience some showers at times. And we'll be talking a bit more about the U.S. in a moment because there's a lot of thunderstorm activity, a lot of rainfall moving in, which is likely uh, maybe triggering flooding across some areas. So we'll be talking about that momentarily. But that is what is expected across the Caribbean region. For Northern South America, for much of Colombia and Venezuela, things should be on the drier side. Closer to the Pacific coast should be a bit more active. And also over in parts of Guyana, Suriname, and especially French Guiana, where we see that red shading. So overall, rainfall amounts could be up to an inch of rainfall at the maximum through tomorrow afternoon. Now looking at the Gulf Coast of the U.S. and even further up into this taste, here we're seeing all this convection moving in. So across portions of Texas, Louisiana, and especially Mississippi, parts of Alabama going further up north, even toward the Great Lakes, we can see all this activity moving through. So likely bring in some strong winds, even a lot of heavy rainfall, which may be unleashing flooding. And so I hope that everyone is doing okay. You can let me know in the comments what's been happening for you. But uh, eventually this system is going to be making its way out as we head into the next couple of days but that's been the story lots of thunderstorms right now potentially with some very strong winds and a lot of heavy rainfall across some areas as i mentioned we'll be taking a look at that potential cool down and uh, let's start out things with the gfs model this is as we're going to be heading into tuesday of next week 
we can see these blue shadings which represent below normal temperatures which means temperatures likely to be cooler than normal within those shaded areas meanwhile the yellows oranges the reds uh, even going to that brown shading indicating above average temperature so we can see that massive cool air uh, expected to be dipping down into parts of the Caribbean at that time, the Yucatan or the Cayman Islands, uh, even for Cuba, maybe very close to Jamaica. But as we head to Thursday of next week, take a look at this. We're seeing all these blue shadings extended a bit further into the region. So uh, GFS has been pretty consistent about that and shows that a massive cool air pretty much dissipating as we head into next weekend and even early the following week. Looking at the euro though, euro has been pretty consistent about this. I have been watching the model for a couple of days well now with this next potential cooldown and euro is showing a more widespread cooldown with uh, maybe lower temperatures compared to what GFS is expecting. This is also as we head into Tuesday of next week, the second to final day of January. And then as we head into towards early February, Friday of next week, the second of uh, February, we can see these blue shadings still across much of the Caribbean islands, especially the greater Antilles, even for the Bahamas and Bermuda as well. So areas as far as portions of the Lesser Antilles may experience some cooler than normal temperatures as we're going to be heading into next week. Models have been pretty consistent about that. So if you are a lover of the cooler temperatures, well, that's some great news for you. So hopefully it comes to fruition and I'll be keeping my eyes on all that is happening. Now into the second part of the video, we are heading straight into the other side of the world. We're kickstarting things with Australia. So there is Kirli, which has formed and is ranked as a category one cyclone on the Australian scale. So the Australian scale is a bit different from the Safari Simpson hurricane wind scale in terms of the intensity. So the system is currently a, a category one cyclone. So that is a system of winds 63 to 88 kilometers per hour, which is around 39 to 55 miles per hour. So on the Safari Simpson scale, that would be uh, within tropical storm territory right there. However, some strengthen is forecast and uh, clearly could make landfall. Uh, if you're if you're watching this and you're from Australia, it is very early in the morning for you on Thursday. So in that case, it would be later today when landfall is expected in Queensland. So preparations have been ongoing and uh, there is likely to be some storm surge associated with this. And that will be exacerbated because of the full moon. So the 25th of the month is full moon. Uh, for me, currently in the Western Hemisphere, it is still Wednesday. But for you guys over in Australia, it is Thursday. So tonight is full moon for you guys. And uh, that is going to naturally result in higher tides. So with Kirli making its way in, it is only going to make things worse. So those coastal areas are definitely at risk. And there's even that tropical cyclone warning for those areas which are highlighted within that orange shading. So uh, areas such as Towns Ville, Charters Towers, and uh, even headed towards McKay, Serena, those areas are likely to experience those very dangerous conditions. And as the system is going to be moving in, it's not merely the winds, but also the tremendous amount of rainfall that it is likely to unleash across the northern portion of the state. So there's likely to be flooding across many areas. And as Curly is going to be making its way in, it is going to weaken. However, there is still going to be that rainfall threat. And in the event of any tropical cyclone, the water is always the issue, whether it be storm surge along those coastal areas or even the heavy rainfall, which results in flooding as the system makes its way in. So further into Queensland, there is still going to be that risk of widespread flooding uh, from whatever is left of Curly at the time as we head into the week. Now we're heading over a bit further to the west here. We're going towards uh, near Madagascar, the islands of La Reunion, as well as Mauritius. So there we can see that invest area that models are showing developing. However, it has been battling some unfavorable conditions. And here we're seeing it just loitering around right now. But there could be quite a bit of rainfall between now and headed towards tomorrow, through tomorrow for both of these islands so yes it is not a cyclone but at the same time we don't need a cyclone to unleash dangerous conditions as it relates to the heavy rainfall which may bring with it some flooding and matter of fact this is a look at the rainfall totals that euro forecasts through tomorrow and here we can see that some of these darker shades of purples and these pinks popping up as well 
are for La Reunion, there could be a lot of rain, potentially some isolated totals up to six inches as we head into tomorrow. For Mauritius, we could see maybe around half or three quarters of an inch of rainfall in total. But overall, there is that threat of heavy rainfall, which may unleash flooding. So please stay safe, guys. Uh, if you're being affected by this, invest over in those islands. Or if you're in Australia right now, getting ready to ride out Kiralee as it makes landfall later tonight for you. And that is it for this update video. I know it has been lengthy, but I hope that you found it to be quite informative. However, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond once I get the chance to do so. And remember to always be with the wise.